right, church? Why don't you hop up on your feet? We're going to start with a little bit of singing, a little bit of lifting our voices nice and high. I praise in the valley, I praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure, and praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters, but my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. I praise when I feel it, I praise when I don't, I praise cause I know you're still in control, my praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound, but my praise is a shout that brings Jericho down, as long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign, you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. So with every voice you sing, praise the Lord, oh my soul, praise the Lord, oh my soul, praise the Lord, oh my soul, I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it? I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it? I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord. attention, Lord. You're worthy of all of our praise. We're looking forward to singing a little bit more to you, Lord, tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen for that, right, church? Amen. Welcome to Aspen Ridge Church. It's good to see you guys. We're excited to continue in worship in just a little bit longer. We're going to sing some more. Before we do, I want to fill you in on a couple of things that are going on around here. So I'm Lawrence, and I'm the Associate Pastor of Worship here at Aspen Ridge. And uh, joining myself and Ryan on stage, you guys know Ryan, there's a bunch of well, you can't call them regulars. You call them ir irregulars. That's what, boom, roasted. We got a couple of friends visiting, and uh, these are friends that have visited us before. They're friends of mine from my old 
life in Kansas, and they're here, and I'm putting in the work, man. If they're staying with me, and they're talented at being musicians, they better be up on stage singing and playing. And so uh, they're going to work off their labor. I'm joking. They're just talented friends, and they're uh, generous with their time and their talents. And so I'm grateful that they're here. And we're going to lean into some music this weekend and maybe even some reflection time, uh, some worship through song. It's going to be a great time. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to welcome all of you who are here, whether you've been here for 30 years at Aspen Ridge or maybe this is your first time. And it's just, it's so good to be here with you in the middle of the snowstorm. And um, man, God's good. I want to draw your attention to the worship folder, the little bulletin you get when you come in, that communication card. We would love to hear from you. The leadership loves to uh, hear if you have any comments, questions, any prayer requests that you want guaranteed to be prayed for. If you fill that out and you put them in the metal containers, the buckets around the room, we will read those. People will pray over those, and uh, we would love to hear from you that way. That's also where we receive our in-person offering. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's continue to sing. Will you continue standing with us? Let's turn our attention on him. Thank you, Lord. Is a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life. I wanna be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy's wide. Cause you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word If you said it, I believe it I've seen how good it works If you started, you're completed I'll take you at your word Are you spoke and the chaos fell in light. Oh, I know I've seen it in my life. It's a narrow road that leads to life. I want to be on it. It's a narrow road and the tide is high, but you're part of the water. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you started, you're completed. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you started, you're completed. I'll take you at your word Cause you're good and you promise I know you're good and you promise You said your love will never give up You said your grace is always enough You said your heart would never forget or forsake me You said I'm saved You call me yours You said my future's full of your hope You never fail So I know that you will fail me You said your love would never give up You said your grace is Always in love, you said your heart would never forget or forsake me. You said I'm saved, you call me yours. You said my future's full of yours. You never fail, so I know that you never fail me. I'll take you at your word. 
If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you started, you're completed. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you started, you're completed. I'll take you at your word. Cause you're good and you promise. I know you're good and you promise. I'll take you at your word. Lord, we believe you. We put our trust in you. Lord, who else do we turn to, Father? Who else has the key to eternal life, to joy, to fulfillment? Who else? We believe you. We put our faith in you. We acknowledge you're worthy of all of our worship. Thank you.
will find a solace church you may be seated thank you for singing with us Three, two, one. when that shoe box is open they're overjoyed you can see them shouting jumping oh, look at how much they are excited this is the first time those children are receiving the shoe boxes they are so happy every box is important because every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. If you get the heart of the child, you will reach the heart of the parents, you will reach the heart of the family, and then you will touch the community. That gift box is the beginning into their hearts. Isn't it incredible how these gifts touch the lives of these children? Every year we see tens of thousands of children discipled. And we couldn't do this without you, so thank you for packing the boxes. Thank you for praying for these children around the world. God bless you, and keep packing those boxes. All right, all right. Operation Christmas Child Boxes to November 12th. And we just want to remind you guys, uh, our trunk or treat, we're doing it in the blizzard tomorrow. 
No, I'm kidding. No, we're moving it. We're moving it to one week back. Same time, two to four. It's just next Sunday, not tomorrow, which is a good call. I think that's pretty wise. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Lawrence, and I'm the worship arts pastor around here. I get the privilege of bringing you our message this weekend, and we find ourselves in this sermon series called Thy Kingdom Come. But before we dive too far in, you know, I already kind of mentioned it, and I'm kind of doting on some friends and things like that. This, uh, you know, this capital C church, this church that's a whole, the, the church that's bigger than just Aspen Ridge, um, man, what a gift it is. Like, it's almost like God planned this out or something like that. This, this idea that we can have these lifelong friendships. I'm sure you've been in this situation too. So many of you, you wouldn't have these friendships otherwise if it wasn't for the church. The church, that's just such a blessing to us. It's such a gift from God. And I want to thank, I mean, maybe we just don't say it enough, you know, but I want to thank, well, God's Tots. Is that the name of the band? Is that what we've been calling ourselves for so many years? If you're familiar with the cringy, the most absolute cringy episode of The Office ever, Scott's Tots. Uh, some of us have maybe named our little band God's Tots after that funny episode that we might quote too much. Um, but I, I'm really grateful for friends. I'm grateful for past and present churches. It's, it's an amazing thing for me to have worlds colliding. I digress. I'm going to experiment on you this weekend. And this is just Lawrence. This is just me being like full disclosure here, right? We've been planning a lot for this weekend's services. And we really want to make sure we allow for some creativity to be a part of this and some reflection. You know, sometimes we're, we're getting you up on your feet. We're trying to get you to sing and everything like that. But maybe it's good to shake up the routine from time to time, right? You know, maybe doing the same old day in and day out uh, can lull us into that lethargic state. So, you know, what about shaking up the routine? And maybe there's a little bit of a a wake-up call there. I don't know. And so we're going to try this. We're just going to try this. I think it's going to be a nice, safe experiment that we're going to try on you. The story of Jesus coming to earth to save and redeem his people, it's just such good news. It changed my life forever, and I know it has changed so many of your lives. But sometimes, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this. I think I forget how much he's actually done for me. And there's this story in the Bible where Jesus has his feet washed. He has his feet washed by a woman's tears and her hair in this act of worship. And this woman is doing this, and she is labeled by an onlooker as a sinner, right? They're, they declare her a sinner. I put that word sinner into quotes because I'm thinking... Uh, who, we know better, right? Don't we know better? Like, who of us is not a sinner at this point when you compare yourself to Jesus? And so, I mean, maybe to help put that in the right context, you could use the church lady's voice in your head. I'm not going to do impersonation. But if you know the church lady, if you know, you know. And when she says the word sinner to describe somebody with that judgy sound, that might be the type of tone that was used to describe this woman who is a sinner. And so in the middle of this act of worship, Jesus turns to the Pharisee who's hosting Jesus and who is questioning this whole interaction. And Jesus answers his questions with a story. He says in Luke 7, this is 41 through 43, a certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now, which of them will love him more? And Simon, the Pharisee in the story, he answers, well, the one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. And Jesus says to him, you have judged rightly. For those of us who are being saved, how much affection and adoration do we have for our God? It, it probably doesn't make sense to onlookers, this affection and this desire for obedience. It, it probably shouldn't make sense if you're on the outside looking in. But I look at 1 Corinthians chapter 118, for the word of the cross is folly 
to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm the person in the story who is being forgiven 500 denarii, and not the 50. And when I remind myself of how much Jesus has forgiven me, I just can't help but feel that gratitude bubble up. Some makes me want to worship in a way that, I mean, I don't know if I want to use my hair to wipe Jesus' feet necessarily, but just like outrageous, like this gratitude inevitably leads to a changed life, right? And a softened heart. And so in the spirit of a creative experiment, I'm just going to step down off the stage for just a few minutes. I'm going to invite my friend Bethany to come back up onto the stage. And Bethany wrote a song a few years back that I'm rather fond of. Um, she wrote this song called Tears and Perfume. It's a very worshipful song. It highlights the qualities and the historical actions of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to encourage you to sit tight and ponder, you know, more than like an act of, of worship for you. It's like um, letting this be a part of the message. I encourage you to reflect on the lyrics that you hear. And in that way, let your affections be turned towards the person of Jesus Christ, this God who came to earth. And in that way, he changed the course of our lives and our paths the paths that stretch on through the course of eternity. Psalm 96 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all peoples. I'm going to ask Bethany to sing at this time, and I encourage you to simply sit and reflect on his marvelous works in his salvation. Bethany.
Church, would you pray with me? Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love and your mercy, um, for your grace and your kindness, and that you've softened my heart. In our hearts, you've turned us away from a path of uh, surely would have led us to destruction. You are the one that keeps me from turning my eyes inward and that keeps me from really just pure selfishness. And you've the one, you are the one that has freed me from the bondage of my wrongdoing and forgiven me and my crimes and my offenses against you. You are the one, Lord. You, in your act of love, in your perfect love, you've saved all of us who have asked for it. We're just so grateful. <laughs> it does, there's no words. And um, we thank you that you're the God that cares. You're the God that's close. We love you. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, um, I'd ask if you'd stand with me. We're going to read from Colossians 1, 13 through 14. It's kind of our tradition to stand during this, this scripture here. And we're just reading here, it says, He has delivered us, Jesus has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. God has transferred us. He's delivered us. And we are in the kingdom. Thanks for standing. You may be seated. And I'm looking forward to looking at the scripture just a little bit more here. You know, Pastor Jeff has been focusing on this kingdom, thy kingdom come, right? We've been talking about thy kingdom that is maybe a far kingdom, but it's on its way. And in so, I mean, we're doing our part here at Aspen Ridge Church to battle our little fight against the prosperity gospel, something that we don't find very helpful, right? Like, we want it. We want it all now. We want all that God has for us right this second. And um, throughout history, I think you could make the argument that people have been praying for God to make them well, fat and happy, maybe. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know if, if people would say those exact words to God, like, Lord, make me fat and happy. But it's kind of like this, um, this, this idea of like, you know, Lord, help me get a big inheritance from this distant aunt and uncle I didn't even know about. I didn't even have to visit them during the holidays. Or, or Lord, help me win the lottery, man. Like, that would, you know, I think it's human nature to just, to want that. But there's a problem with that, and it's, one, that God knows that abundance, it really never leads to faith. It does not build faith for us. And we know that the Bible doesn't promise us a painless life. The Bible actually kind of promises us the opposite, right? And I'm just looking at James 1, 2 here. It says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. And James 1, 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. 1 Peter 5.10, And after you have suffered for a little while, just a little while, after you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And then Romans 5.3, More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. So, I mean, to expect that we will have a cushy life and to expect that all these days are going to be sunny with no snowstorms, no rainstorms, is kind of missing the point here, I think, of what we see when we look at the bigger picture of the Bible here. Um, Pastor Jeff, Norm, Pastor Craig, you know, we've been using this sermon series to focus on this coming kingdom and this meeting of heaven and earth and this ultimate redemption of God's people. But what I get to speak on this weekend is just a little bit like a, a juxtaposed view of this a little bit. Like I have Pastor Jeff's blessing to talk about this idea, this mysterious part of the kingdom that is already here. The kingdom that is already. Norm Lewis, just a couple of weeks ago, he spoke on this kingdom from Romans. 
He wrote, he read uh, from Romans 14, 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that Holy Spirit piece for a second. If, if the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? So Jesus, he gave us his spirit for those who would follow him, like the, the people that are wanting to serve him and look more like him. He has given us his spirit. It is the God that is with us. And sometimes I think we make it sound a little mystical or a little spooky. You know, some of these translations, we see the words Holy Ghost. We're like, well, what's that? I don't know if I really want to be haunted, you know, by this, this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost. But it is a facet of God, a person in the Trinity, one of the three in the Trinity. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the guiding voice, the God that is present. It is Jesus' Spirit that he gave to his followers. It is the God that is close. And we can realize the kingdom of God through the person of the Holy Spirit, just like what we read in Romans. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. Let's read it like this. Let's change it a little. For the kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Spirit, the Spirit who empowers us. But, and the, the big caveat, we can't realize all of the kingdom of God. Not yet. Not yet anyway. And that's where this theological concept, this, this tricky little phrase comes up, the already and the not yet. This idea, already but not yet. What does this mean? Well, to describe it in kind of a, maybe a fancy way here, it's like believers are actively taking part in the kingdom of God, although the kingdom will not reach its full expression until sometime in the future. I want to know when, like what time in the future? Well, sometime in the future. You know, we have this, we have this already. We have the kingdom, but we do not yet see it in its full glory, right? It's a paradigm. Theologians talk about this. They say Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. If you took this to your math teacher in your school, I don't know if they'd buy that. I don't know if you'd pass the math test, but a lot of really smart theologians believe in this idea that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. It's a paradigm. And we have this idea that the kingdom of God, it is future, but it's present too. And we just read in our passage this last week, and there's a past tense in there, right? We, we read that. Let's read Colossians 1, 13 and 14 again. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. We read these words, delivered us, transferred us. But we know, so there's that past tense, but we know just by looking at the world around us that we are not yet living in God's full-fledged paradise. We just are not. So we can wrestle with this. How much of the kingdom is here now? I'm going to ask Pastor Craig at this moment. Pastor Craig, how much of the kingdom is here now? I'm just kidding. Please don't answer. I'm not really going to make you do that. What is the perfect ratio? Like, what is it? Like, how much of it is already and how much of it is not yet? I was half joking when I asked my small group this just like a couple weeks ago. We're sitting there and I'm like, what do you think that is? That ratio of how much of the kingdom is here and how much are we waiting for? And I say it in a joking way because I step back and I think, that's not really a helpful question. It's, it's just not a great question to ask. I mean, you're allowed to have your opinion on that perfect ratio, but it would be a silly thing to argue about. Is the kingdom of God 50% here and 50% still to come? Is that exactly what it is? Pastor Craig, why am I asking you? I could ask Pastor Jeff. Let's put him on the spot. We'll, we'll solve this right now, the perfect percentages. I'm kidding again. This is like, is the kingdom, maybe we only have 4% of the kingdom right now and 95% of it is still coming and there's still 1%. The angels that were polled were undecided, so we don't have that quite figured it out. But it's just, it's just not a helpful question, right? What we do know is we can have a hope in the future and the kingdom that is coming. And Jesus taught us to pray in the kingdom, your kingdom come, Lord. It's not quite here yet, but we're praying for your kingdom to come. 
But in the meantime, we have the person of the Holy Spirit, and he's alive in us. He's guiding us. He's helping us. He's helping us see this kingdom come. And that spirit is with us now at this moment. So I think it's really important to have a hope, not just in eternity, but to have a hope in tomorrow and a hope in the coming week because we're empowered by this spirit and God's love. And the inverse is true. It's important to have a hope, not just in now. We don't expect every single thing to work out perfectly now. But we have a hope in eternity. We have a hope in both of these things. We need this balance. We need to have a hope in the already and the not yet. So here's what I see in the Bible. When we're talking about the spirit that's with us and the already, I see in Colossians, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom. God's one. And we're on his side. If you want to be on his side, he's welcoming you. He's delivered us. He's transferred us to his kingdom. And then we see in Romans, for the kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And we have that spirit with us here now. We can have relationship with God. Communion with God through that spirit now. Is everything perfect? No, not yet, not yet. But do we have hope? And do we have purpose? And do we have guidance? And do we have comfort? One more time, I want to ask you to reflect. And one more time, I'm I'm inviting the team to come up and to sing. Come up, guys. But I ask you to pause and to remain seated and to reflect. Earlier, I used this phrase, creative experiment. And I hope you know that I'm, I'm not being um, brash or, or I'm, not, I'm not being careless with you and your time. I'm doing the best I can as a, with a pastoral heart. This creative experiment, I mean, this just isn't how our weekends usually go around here. Um, before we stand and sing together to close out the service in unison, I want to ask you to first reflect on some song lyrics. The team's going to sing a song called Here Now. Aspen Ridge once recorded and played this song during the COVID stay-at-home era. So you might recognize it. If you were worshiping with us during that time, you might recognize this song. This song communicates this one simple truth really well, that God's Spirit is here with us at this very moment, and He is invisible, and He is silent, and He's mysterious. It's hard to get our heads around this concept, but His Spirit is here now. And he is guiding our path, and he is speaking, and he is comforting, and we are not alone. And we have help as we live our lives from the creator of all things. So first, 60 seconds, quiet our hearts, meditate on the scripture we just heard. Take a minute. We'll sing, focus on him. Let's just take that time. Turn our time to you, Lord. Turn our attention to you, our affections to you, Lord. Speak to us through your word. Thank you. Skies spin their dance within your breath.
time runs its race within your hand And my mind runs wild to comprehend And no mind on earth could understand Your ways are higher Your thoughts are wilder Love came like madness Poured out in blood washed romance It makes no sense but this is grace I know you're with me in this place Here, now all I know is I know that you are here now Still my heart, let your voice be all I hear now Spirit breathe like the wind come out of your way Cause I know you're in this place
And fix my eyes on the things that I can't see now I spill it, bring like the wind, come back your way Cause I know that you are here Thank you for being the God that is here Thank you, church Church, we invite you to lift your voices with us and sing to the God who deserves a thousand hallelujahs and then a thousand.
and even more, Lord, and even more. You deserve as many hallelujahs as we can possibly sing to you, Lord. Because you're the God who's delivered us from the domain of darkness. And you've transferred us to the kingdom of your beloved Son. We have redemption in you and forgiveness of our sins. Man, you're worthy of it all. Thank you for who you are. You're worthy of it all. Amen. Church, thanks for being here. Thank you for singing with us. Be blessed as you go. And don't you dare come to the trunk or treat tomorrow. It's definitely not going to be here. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.